<laughs> so. Okay, Rob. Uh, yeah, okay, so anyway, so we thought we did this ham radio thing. Um, I just wanted to introduce Dr. Avery real quick. It's kind of funny, we moved into a new house about, I don't know, what, three years ago. And we had to build our, our new construction and everything. And we were looking at our property and there was this, out way out there on the horizon, there was this mountain. And there was this house sitting up on top of the mountain. And had all these antennas sticking out. <laughs> and I thought, man, that guy must be a real interesting guy. <laughs> and so, lo and behold, I was—I actually was taking that semester off, I think, from school. And so, I'm, I'm an electrical engineering student. And um, so, we, uh, in my senior year, I took this class. He was a professor. He only teaches one class a year, and it's kind of a industry-based class. Um, you know, very, very practical, very engineering like. And so I was attended the first day, and my, the professor says, Yeah, I'm a ham, and I live on top of a mountain. I thought, <laughs> <laughs> and so I came up after class, and I, you know, I, I screwed up my career. He says, Dr. Avery, are you, are you still out in Spanish for me? Et cetera, et cetera. And he said, Yeah, that's me. So, uh, so without further ado, I guess that's a good introduction for Dr. Avery, one of my favorite professors. All right. Great. Very pleased to be here. Thank God Robert's so well organized. <laughs> he called me last week and he called me yesterday and said, No problem. And I'm working on a killer project that was due last Tuesday. <laughs> I got to get it done and it involves software, my nemesis, as all my students know. All better than I am. But uh, I was working and, uh, and uh, I said, You know, I, I'm just going to have to take a nap. And I laid down and my phone rang. <laughs> so, uh, I've been a ham radio out here for a long, long time. Um, when I first got started, uh, you could go out to Robert's Surplus at the Oakland Airport, and you could buy ham radio equipment for a nickel a pound. Uh, well, no, I'm not lying. It was 25, 25 cents a pound. <laughs> I remember my first, uh, my first transmitter was an ARC-5 out of a B-29 bomber, and uh, it was two dollars and twenty-five cents. It weighed nine pounds. And I got it working and put it in my mom's uh, stew maker. Uh, and, uh, there were wires hanging down under the dashboard where I, I hooked into the car radio. And they were really good car radios in those days. I mean, you know, push-pull outputs, big speakers. You know, I mean, they were so beautifully made. Uh, so much better than the ones we have now. I mean, this is incredible. And. Uh, so I took the output from this one shortwave radio and ran it into the radio so I could, you know, hear it. And uh, she drive, well, and then I got a transmitter. I put a, what they call a dynamo, a terribly inefficient, 50% efficiency amount. They were horrible. And uh, we have beautiful transistor things now that work great. And it would run the battery dead pretty quick. You know, it's a six volt system. And I'd go to school, then she'd come out, and she'd have to go to school. And she'd hit the starter on the little student maker, and it would, uh, not be there because I used up the battery evidently. <laughs> so she pushed that 4,000 pound car down the driveway, jump in as it went around and made a turn, go down the street, pop the clutch and get to school, you know. <laughs> and then get there and find out her nylons were run because the wires hanging down by the bed. <laughs> My mom loved me dearly. <laughs> she put up with a lot. But I, uh, I knew I'd be an electrical engineer before I could see over the kitchen table. I was that young. I just knew I'd be an electrical engineer. Yeah, I've been crazy about it ever since. Had electric train. So uh, when I just started uh, high school, I uh, had a friend who was a ham radio actor, and I went over to his house, and I studied the book, and we we uh, took the novice exam, you know, and I had to do five words a minute, uh, sending and receiving, and uh, got my novice, and. Uh, uh, he, uh, the guy that gave me the test had had, had polio, I remember, it was a heck of a nice guy, and uh, he, uh, he gave me the exam, it was all sealed and he opened it for me and I took it there, and I remember one question in particular, he says, what is a log? And one of the choices was an antenna supporting structure. <laughs> that was the wrong answer. <laughs> but, uh, the things have come a long way. In those days, we all used AM amplitude modulation, uh, just like the AM broadcast dial. 
And uh, uh, it, you listen to lots of whistles on the air, and uh, the equipment wasn't really very good. Um, there was a there was some good equipment made by Collins and, and things like that. Okay. But the Collins was definitely the Cadillac, but it was very expensive. It was not fair for that. So I got some used equipment and started playing with ham radio and putting an antenna on the roof and uh, terribly, horribly inefficient antenna. And, uh, and I started talking to people. Uh, and it was just such a thrill. You have no idea. Uh, you're starting out, and you're, you know, you hear some little signal, and you find out he's in another state or something like that. You know, it's a big, big deal in your book. And uh, a little later, I got some army surplus walking talkies. I know you've seen them in the little working movies. They're big and green and have a little amount of people. Pull up the antenna, you know. <laughs> yeah. They work, but oh, they were just I mean, eight batteries. And, uh, so, uh, but I loved ham radio, and I, I loved the thrill of having my own personal transmitter and receiver uh, that you're legally allowed to use, and it's just your ingenuity and your cleverness, how well it's going to work, and some money too. But you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And uh, I've always was thrilled with uh, Robert and Wayne's family. Uh, they, uh, they, uh, everybody was a ham radio operator, and they got the little two meter, uh, you know, 140 megahertz, 144 megahertz uh, walkie talkies, and the whole family can keep in contact when they're on vacation or going anywhere. I mean, it was that was fun. Um, in those days, there were no cell phones, <laughs> and uh, so the ham radio operators actually performed a really a, a good service. They had radios in their car, and you probably, I don't know, you've probably seen them. So you have a, a, a sedan, right? And then you'd see something on the back that looked like that. Yeah. <laughs> like a Tudorville trolley. And, and uh, we had these uh, rigs in our car. And if anything ever went wrong, you'd call someone from the car that, that was in his home, and then he would make a phone call. And I had help, I've helped many times, uh, some accident or some problem. And, and, and one of the big things about ham radio that some of you may be interested in, and there's a very active group right here in Reno, uh, and Robert will be able to tell you about it. Oh, okay. Tim knows, uh, but uh, uh, your emergency, they're all set up for emergency. So if there's an emergency and the power goes out, uh, then uh, the hams come in and, and provide emergency communication. Uh, uh, the, I'm not positive, but I believe they can help. Does the sheriff's auxiliary have some ham? ham I don't know. But uh, that's another quite, quite a good group. Uh, <coughs> 